in the sandwich shop, you can talk to uh, this uh, baker here, and she's going to challenge you to a battle, and after you win the battle, she's going to offer you to play a little minigame, which we'll get to in an instant. But first, about that question I asked last time, well, apparently I'm not a gamer at all in your eyes, and not only that, but it's going to take me... A few life, a few lifetimes in order to be able to achieve that because, wow, you guys gave me a, a lot of games that I've never played that are that are apparently mandatory in order to be considered a gamer. Of course, it didn't help that many of you gave me 57 games rather than one, but still, apparently I have some work to do if I want to call myself a true lead gamer. Anyway. Uh, the baker went down really easily. She she had a uh, combi and a nursering. I guess uh, the link between the two is honey, though I don't know what what honey has to do with sandwiches unless you like honey sandwiches for some reason. Anyway, um, I'm going to be acting as a waiter here. So um, uh, I'm going to uh, show you the explanation. I'll be taking orders from uh, customers. And then I'll go back to her and uh, tell her the orders and then give the orders back to the customers. Of course, this minigame was stolen straight from the Tales series. You may recognize it from either Symphonia or Vesperia or both, I guess. So, this one wants a cherry berry, so I'm gonna have to remember it. No need to write it down anywhere, it's just four people. Chesto berry, so. This one wants a cherry, this one a chesto, so let's take a look at what this one wants. Person berry, so cherry, chesto, person. Cherry, chesto, person. And this one, petra berry. Cherry, chesto, person, petra. So let's head back to the baker. Cherry, chesto, person, petra. So. Number one wants cherry, number two wants chesto, number three wants persim, and number four wants pecha. So now I am really hoping that number two is the one with the patrat and not the one with the minchino. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose for sure. So let's see now. I'm gonna have to serve them to the correct customers. So this one wants the cherry berry. Yep, there we go. So, um, now, let's, okay, Chesto Berry, is it the one? Yes! Okay, I wasn't sure if number two was the one next to a number one or a behind number one, but it turned out okay in the end. Especially, it's especially weird considering that there is no indication of, of whether it's going horizontally or vertically. So, you're, it was a shot in the dark, a 50-50's chance, and managed to get it. So, now that we have successfully pleased everyone, okay, I'm gonna get a little job review. Perfect! The customers seem to be satisfied too. And our gift is a Lumberry! Well, this is slightly more useful than uh, one of the worst titles for one of the worst characters in the game, but uh, yeah, it could, it could be useful. Not the best thing ever, but Still, fairly decent berry version of a full heal. And here's a house where you can rest, you know, just in case you don't want to go all the way back to Opelucid to heal. I guess it's sort of handy. <laughs> I wish I wish I'd remember that, actually, because I went back to Opelucid to heal uh, before I started recording this video. So, um... Oh, right! This one! Uh, th this woman here is going to, uh... Leave uh, the village bridge just, I just as I arrive in her home. Which doesn't make any bit of sense. I mean, why now? Why the moment that I just enter the home? But anyway, this one here. I am a member of the Hip Waiters, as its name suggests. It's a fishing club. So, um, well... Why not, I guess, even though I have no intention of doing anything for you. Now you're the second member of the Hip Waiters. I sort of like this as if it was a club that he invented on the spot, which it, pro which it probably is. So, um, he wants me to uh, fish for, catch, and show him a goldine, which won't happen because it's just... No, I'm not even going to spend the time to do this. 
it is just going to be a waste of my time considering what you get for it. Which is, uh, five dive balls, I think. And dive balls, you know, they're just as effective as, uh, dusk balls. Um, and they work all day long, but they only work on Pokémon you encounter while surfing or fishing, which usually makes, uh, Hunting at night for du with Dusk Ball is a better choice since you don't have to worry at all ab about which kind of ball to use and when. So we get a little uh, a little uh, reference to Hard Gold and Soul Silver. Jono confirmed. And uh, by the way, wh while we come back on the subject of Village Sandwiches, you can do the Waiter mini game once per day and get a Lumberry once per day. So if you end up being low on Lumberries, uh, which is going to be uh, the case, especially if you don't uh, partake in the Dream World stuff, uh, you are going to uh, want to come back here if you just like the the idea of. Uh, of uh, a Lumberry, of course, you can just buy a full heal instead and uh, fight one like one trainer at the Nimbasa Stadiums to make up for it. But um, that's just me rambling on now. And yeah, a lot of people are talking about the architecture of the bridge, which uh, it, it's a fairly interesting concept, the village bridge. Especially consider considering that in Black and White 2, they resort to uh, just recycling the Pacific Lock gimmick for Humilau. So, um, only one more person to... Okay, my grandpa is a stonecutter for Village Bridge. Well, thanks for the useless info. So, now we are done with the Village Bridge area, so we can move on to Route 12, which is, well, it's... Not it's not a route as much as it is, you know, just a plane with them. Um, of course, there are slopes, so, so it's not really a plane, but it's just a giant square with some trainers and wild Pokémon. The place is pretty much a bug paradise. Most of the Pokémon that you're going to encounter there are uh, bug type, though you can find some stuff like uh, Tranquil and Rapidash for some reason. Yeah, sure, a uh, wood-like area where you encounter a, bu uh, a lot of bugs, and then you got a bunch of rapid ashes to set, up th to set the entire place on fire. Yeah, brilliant idea, game designers. Now, uh, it's occurred to me that I never got a chance to talk about uh, Reshiram and Zekrom and what they do and how you can use them considering what's happened since uh, I went to Anne's castle. So I'm going to take the time to do that. Now I'm going to start with Zekrom, since, uh, well, it's the one that I got on my team right now. Zekrom is, well, both, both, Ze both Reshiram and Zekrom are fairly disappointing Ubers, all things considered, because, well, it's, it's, it's just that their move pool uh, well, especially in uh, Zekrom's case, because uh, Reshiram has that uh, unresisted dual stab, thanks to um, thanks to a Turbo Blaze. But uh, Zekrom also has move pool problems, and by that I mean sure, it, it, it's not restricted to purely st uh, the stab moves, but uh, it's got uh, it's got stuff like Crunch and um, Stone Edge, for example. But no moves that have a really, really high damage output compared to the likes of Bolt, Straight, Bo Bolt Strike and Outrage, sorry. So, th these are the two moves that are going to be most commonly found on, uh, on Zekrom. And instead of using uh, other moves for additional coverage, Zekrom users like to use Dragon Claw as an alternative to Outrage to not uh, get locked into a move and get confused soon afterwards. And uh, they also tend to use Vault Switch for uh, switching opportunities while still dealing a bit of damage. And believe it or not, Fusion Bolt is also really popular on... Uh, on Zekrom, even though nearly all of them have Bolt Strike, a lot of a lot of people run both Bolt Strike and Fusion Bolt, just because Bolt Strike has somewhat shaky accuracy. So I get a Citrus Berry from uh, this uh, Pokemon Breeder. I'll gladly take it, even though I'm probably not going to use it. I guess it could 
be useful, except not really. I ha I can't really find a situation in-game where it could be uh, usable. But I got the Energy Ball TM, which is rather interesting, because um, I got it this late, but I started getting moves as powerful as it a long time ago. For example, I found Scald inside the Cold Storage, and that was before the fifth gym, so why do I get Energy Ball so late? Oh well, it's uh, one of the best grass moves, I guess I'm not really complaining. Man, there are so... Another one! So many freaking mushrooms in this area, I wonder if they respawn. Probably not, but uh, lots of mushrooms that you can take uh, to uh, the, the Maniac on Route 5 to make a little bit of coin in case you uh, run out. You can see the outer walls of uh, Lacunosa Town from here. We're going to be getting there, probably not today, but next video most likely. But yeah, I was talking about Zekrom, and really, the fact that Bolt Strike and Outrage are so powerful means that even when they're resisted, they will often be just as good as the potential coverage moves that Zekrom could have, which is um, somewhat of a problem. I mean, don't tell me that this Gargantuan Beast couldn't do an Earthquake. I mean... Have you seen the kind of ridiculous shit that does get Earthquake? And you were telling me that Zekrom can't do that? Really? And basically, this is why um, Zekrom is not quite as popular as it should be. Because, you know, it just doesn't have really powerful coverage alternatives to just using stuff like Bolt Switch and Dragon Claw alongside Bolt Strike and Outrage, which is a shame, really, because Zekrom has potential. I mean, you got a guy that can potentially completely annihilate Kyogre by hitting it with Bolt Strike, which is massively powerful, through Kyogre's lesser defense stat, which not many, you, not many Ubers can claim that, so... It's really disappointing that a Pokémon that's almost designed to be able to be the second strongest Pokémon in the Uber metagame and give a lot of trouble to Who and Lugia as well, among others, it's just so disappointing that it cannot manage to do well despite, you know, being made just for that. And when I say it's insane how people will go for secondary stab moves instead of using coverage moves, even the moves like Draco Meteor, Substitute, Sleep Talk, Hone Claws are more popular than uh, the most popular coverage move, which is, believe it or not, a special move with 70 accuracy. Yeah, I'm talking about Fail Blast. I mean, sure, Zekrom's special attack isn't exactly a lost cause at base 120, but still, I find it... I, I wouldn't be comfortable using a special move on a Pokémon with a base attack stat of 150. This is what I was talking about before with uh, Black Urem Black being sometimes forced to use... Uh, moves like Ice Beam and Blizzard in order to do any damage with Ice because their only physical alternative is, like, Freeze Shock. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. I wanted to cover QRM in a little bit more detail when we would get to the Giant Chasm, which isn't too far off, actually. It's the first area we're going to be exploring after uh, dropping by a Lacunosa Town, which we're going to do next time as I'm going to get another berry, presumably, yep, another citrus berry. So, yeah, the Pokémon Daycare on Route 3. You know what really sucks about it? Is that you can only access it in the post-game, in the Black and White 2. I have no idea what they were thinking! I mean, breeding is such a huge mechanic, and you're with withholding it, it from us for that long. Anyway, grabbing that full heal will be the last thing we do, we do today, so I will see you next time.